This is why we share things like this. And he called it the ancient landmarks. I don't have time to teach. I know he was overtaken by bodies. But let me list them for you. You go and do your study. Anytime I have time, I will teach you. I'll pick it one by one and show you the ancient landmark. It was chronicled in Hebrews chapter 11. It said, through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God and the things which are were not made out of the things which do appear. It said, by faith the elders obtained a good report. What was the substance of their faith? Hebrews 11 verse 5 we saw the first landmark they pleased God it said by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God what does it mean to please God you know, we need to x-ray the Bible to understand what it means those are the landmarks so the fathers did not live to please men they live only to please God. And if a generation will attain those landmarks, then this must become the focus of our lives. Regardless of what we go through, so long as God is pleased, then our life counts. The second landmark is the fear of God. Hebrews 11 verse 7. When you read the Bible, don't rush. Pay attention. It will shape your destiny. By faith, Noah being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear the elders they sustain fear for God there are certain economies in God you can't enter until you fear him he said the secret things belong to God the things that are revealed belong to us but who are those who possess them he said it is those who fear God Psalm 25 verse 14 they that fear him he said he will show them his covenants so the reason the fathers were custodians of the oracles of God is because the fear of God was their heaviest garment. He said he will not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor the hearing of his ears. You come to a level where you don't operate by facts, you operate by secrets, secrets that are committed to you. The third landmark of the fathers is obedience to God. Hebrews 11 verse 9. Look at Abraham. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as a straight country, dwelling in Tabernacles. With Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. Next verse. Hmm. Go to the verse before, I beg your pardon. Verse 8. Let me read the host. He said, by faith, Abraham, when he was called, to go out into the place which he should after he received for an, to receive for an inheritance. He obeyed and went out, not knowing whither he went. We don't obey God because there's a promise. We obey God because it's the heritage of the saints. Even if you don't know the destination, obedience is the destination. Even if there's no promise, obedience is the promise. The Bible said he didn't even know where he was going, yet he carried his sons who were co-heirs with him of the promise. These are the landmarks of the fathers. We are a rebellious generation. We can't even keep the commandments of God. Even the personal ones God gives us. You hear a person tells you that God told me to do this, but my brother, he know is you. God will help us. You are joking. You don't know the parts of the ancient. And that's why the things that the Bible speak of will remain a story to you for your lifetime. Obedience, the landmark. Number four, they lived with the consciousness of the blessing. So their confidence were the promises that God gave them. Their confidence was not anchored in men. Their confidence was anchored on what the Lord told them. Hebrews 11 verse 20. I'm showing you things. This is a, an era where when a man is boasting, he's boasting because his uncle is a senator. When a man is boasting, he's boasting because he has money in the account. We don't know the ways of the fathers. He said, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. This was their strength, the blessing. That's why they will never die until they transfer it. A man wants to die, he will keep his last breath. Gather down me, you sons of Jacob. I have a heritage to commit to you. This is our secret. We are not powerful because of the nation we live. We are not powerful because of the men we are connected to. We are not powerful because of the resources we possess. You never heard that these men gave cows, donkeys to their children. 
they laid hands of them and they transferred the aggregated blessings upon their lives. A man will tell his son, he said, go, I bless you with corn and wine. Where is it? I bless you with the dew of heaven. And these guys walked from nation to nation. They could not be subdued. Even nations where they were strangers, they dominated because there was the consciousness of the blessing. What is your confidence? Ask 30 Christians today what they are coming. You don't even need to ask them. Hear them talk, you will know. A man talks like a God. And when you check, his confidence is money. What a mundane life. When you check, his confidence is his experience. When you check, his confidence is who he knows and where he has gone to. We don't know the ways of the fathers. The fathers were men who were fortified because of the oracles of God. In Psalm 9, Romans 9, verse 4, he said, who are the Israelites? Who are they? How do you define this man? Who are the Israelites? Are they men who are connected to people or to territory? He said, no. He said, to whom pertained the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and service and the promise. This was their confidence. The things God promised them. If you have not gotten to that point where it's what God told you or what the Bible says that's your confidence, you don't know the ancient landmarks. And I can tell you, this is not what is now obtainable in Christianity. Number five, what is the fifth landmark? These men were worshippers of God. Hebrews 11, 21. They prioritize worship. Unfortunately, it's other religions now that value worship. Check some of the religions around you. When they get to an office, the first thing they do is they build a, 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 a worship center. Even in their personal house, they build worship centers. They can, they, there will be crisis in a foreign land and you ask why they are fighting for a worship center to be built. But a Christian, who cares? You don't even have a prayer house. Is it a church you will build in your house? Rather, when we are even talking church, Christians are fighting. Why? Because they think what we need is companies. They will tell you, how can that church be big? There are no companies there. Shut up. You don't know anything about civilization. What do you mean by companies? Do you know how nations are built? If it's all about companies, why are all the kings of the earth trying to fraternize with the devil? Who told you you have any form of intelligence? They are telling you company. All the company you speak of, how many staff do they have? Maybe you should go and check the payroll of many churches. And then you will understand. You said they should build bank. How many staff do banks have? Some of the churches in this country have as much as 5,000 staff. If you begin to check employers of labor, I tell you, aggregate them together. There's no one that employs people more than church. Who told you church is a nuisance? But we don't know it's the heritage of the fathers. Hebrews 11, 21. I'm showing you these things so that you will value them. Don't let anybody brainwash you. He said, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon his staff. Even at, the, at his death, the last thing that was recorded about this man was that he was worshipping. They worshipped all their life and they transited to glory through the pathways of worship. Because that was the heaviest molecule of their existence. He blessed his children and he leaned on his staff. Abba, Father. Shalom, shalom. What a way to live. But do you worship only when you come to church on Sunday? That's not how to live your life. The fathers were worshippers. They woke up singing. Go and read their life for God's sake. It will humble you. Abraham kept hearing God like a friend. Every detail of their life, they were communing with God as though God was their best friend. And true to it, God himself, God Abraham, his friend. Moses will have details even of buildings including knots and boats because of the level of depth that they had with God. But we have a generation where even the corporate worship designed to strengthen us, men can participate in it. Call for video, see those who will come. Even service, people can't come because worship means nothing to us and that is why our spirit is weak and the devil uses us as a theater to manifest his powers. 
Find out how many Christians are sick. It looks as if men have become the theater for manifesting different types of sicknesses. And there is an occupation now that's got these characteristics of sickness. If they want to find cancer, they carry men to the lab like lab rats to define different kinds of cancer, different kinds of sicknesses. We are like in vessels through which demons import things from Hades to earth. Because a generation has no power in the spirit. Remove not the ancient landmarks. What is the depth of your worship? Number six. This man refused to put their confidence in the arm of flesh. Hebrews 11, 24. He said when Moses was come of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. If you are the one, it will be a big deal for you. The governor is my friend. And today, you'll find pastors, people who are criminals, people who are apostles and ambassadors of immorality. They come to church and we flaunt them on the altar just to show the world that we have relevance. What a garbage type of relevance. It's a shame. People, we can't tell the truth to the face. They come with their iniquity and because we are hungry about validation, we bring liars, seductive agents to stand on the altar. We stand with them. We snap. We are the ones posting it. See, I know the place of honor. I honor fathers of faith. I honor them. But hear me. I don't put my confidence in any man. I've preached to you before. Only God makes men. I honor men from the depths of my heart. But no man takes the place of God. That's why no matter who you think you are, the moment you want to play God to hell with you, I walk away and I never look back. Nobody takes the place of God. But we are weak because we have no relationship with God. So our confidence comes from our affiliations with men. With men. With men. And every time they bring reproach to the church, we bring them to church, they go out and do all kinds of nonsense. Pastors are going to clubs with popular singers. Pastors are bringing actors that are advocates of, of, of sexual immorality. And they prioritize it. They bring them to church so that people think they are relevant. I would rather languish in obscurity, serving God in integrity, than to have an association that does not promote God. The ancient landmarks. Nobody can add anything to God. It's God that adds everything to us. Unless you don't know the God you are serving. Unless you have not been delivered from the, from the vanity of the flesh. Number seven. This man embraced affliction. Hebrews 11, 25, 26. He said, Moses chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than the pleasures of Egypt which was for a season. He chose affliction. All he needed to do was to obey the laws of Egypt, cooperate with Pharaoh, and deny Israel. But the guy said no. He esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the pleasures of Egypt. We have a church where people can't go through affliction. You say fast. If somebody fast from morning till 12, he say his body is shaking. Is that the man who is sleeping in the cell? You say, go out for soul winning. They say they can't trek. You are joking. You can't trek. I had trekked until my shoe tore around. There was a time, that was like 14 years ago. I went to church. The little money we had, we had to give to the babes that we were bringing to church. So those days, what you do is, every week, maybe you go to a football field, buy football for them, and you bring a bus to bring them to church. Paraventure. Somebody will have an encounter. And so when church is over, we are paying transport fare for people. People line up. And I emptied myself. And I'm not using myself as an example. I'm just showing you the basics of this reality. And I was emptied. By the time I finished, all the, the leaders had gone. I had to trek home at 8.30. I got home by 11. Those of you who are in Makodi, you know. I was trekking from around government house to New GRA. When I got to the house, I was so tired. I couldn't close the door. I fell on the floor and slept. That night, I was beaten by scorpion twice. Because of the level of tiredness, I fell on the scorpion, scrubbed it to death. It was in the morning I saw it. I was too tired to stand up to find out what was stinging me. 
And when I stood up, there's no car. I won't do this anymore. I snapped the scorpion, took to church as a testimony. They shall tread upon scorpions and serpents. You are drunk. Meanwhile, that is not an affliction. That is just reasonable service. I quoted for you, Acts 5.41. The apostles were flogged. They were celebrating that they too are worthy to suffer persecution for Jesus. Is that the kind of Christianity we have now? Number seven, they rejected the word. Hebrews 11.27. Moses rejected Egypt. Moses rejected Egypt. He chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. He didn't care about the wrath of the king. He was more conscious about seeing him that is invincible. We are friends of the world. It's the world that teaches us how to dress. It's the world that teaches us how to talk. And we think that is part of civilization. We think that is part of being of being social. No. He said, disciple the world. The world shouldn't disciple you. Go into all the worlds and disciple them. Today, most of us are under pressure because of the philosophy of the world system. We don't know the ways of the fathers. The fathers, a one man could stand against the whole generation. Did you not read about Noah? Noah stood against the whole generation. He wasn't troubled. And it's not for one week. For 100 years, Noah was building an ark. They mocked him night and day. It didn't affect him. Today we cave in to every little pressure because we have no stamina in the spirit. Be bold enough to be different. Everybody can think it's stupidity to be a virgin. Be stupid for Jesus. Everybody can think it's foolishness not to take bribe. Be foolish for Jesus. That is what it means to be a disciple. There's a difference between disciples and members. Members come to get things. Disciples come to learn the ways of God. There's a difference. And the trophy of a disciple is that he has mastered the ways of God and he lives it as his lifestyle. That's all he's looking for. We don't have people who can reject the word. Number eight. These guys lived a life of covenant. Hebrews 11, 28. Look at what the Bible said. Through faith, he kept the Passover. This is a generation where people are fighting every ordinance of the kingdom. You give offering, they say you are brainwashed. You give first fruit, they say it's, it's obsolete. You give tight, they say you don't know what you are doing. You go to church, you serve in church, they say you don't know what to do with your time. Go and get a job. And many gullible Christians have gone by the seductive suggestions of the world system. Because we don't know who we are. I'm not saying don't be relevant to your generation. I'm not saying don't develop yourself. But I am saying God comes first. He says seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing shall be added to you. Unless you are saying Jesus don't know what he's saying. And before you talk, they start quoting Japan, Korea to you. You know nothing about the end of time. There is what is called the judgment of the nations. Some of the nations you are using as example. And I'm not referring to this one I called. They may never appear in the new earth. Because when nations are judged, just the way Sodom and Gomorrah vanished, most of the nations that you are using as an example today, they will be destroyed. They will not reappear in the new earth. Because it's not only men that will be judged. Nations too will be judged. And many nations will never be part of God's history. Number nine. These men were workers of wonders. Hebrews 11, 29. I wish I have time to show you about the wonders of the fathers. He said, through faith, by faith they passed through the Red Sea as a dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. They live a life of wonder as their normal life. And the people of the world thought it was trial and error. When they tried it, they were drowned. So any Christianity that does not have power is a joke. That's why I told you, all this talking, oh, we are talking power. Oh, Gassa, we have not seen power in this generation. No. Don't deceive yourself to start thinking all we need is character. Yes, we need character. And we need it as the foundation of our life. But Christianity without power is not Christianity. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. First Corinthians 4.20 The kingdom of God is not in words. It's in power. 
These men were carriers of power. They knew what to do. Until today, those who truly follow the path of the patriarch, you can go to a man and tell him you have a crisis. He will tell you, hold my hand. It is well with you. Go. You'll be shocked that an affliction of 10 years will turn around. It's not about drama. It's about what you carry. And if you have it, you know. If you don't have it, you know. You either want to deceive yourself or the people. But if you carry it, you know what you carry. You, you, what you carry is what defines you. It's not a drama. You know. And I can tell you many don't carry it. And the reason we don't carry it is because we have departed from the consecrations of the fathers. Number 10. These men were carriers of the mysteries and the secrets of God. Hebrews 11, 30. Custodians. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they compassed it and passed about it for seven days. Who told them that walking around the city for seven days and blasting trumpets will collapse it? They carry secrets. So the things they did may look foolish to men, but they were secrets. That's why they had results that could not be explained. But today we are trying to do it the way the world is doing it. The reason is because we are devoid of secrets. And finally, these men had dominion as their badge. Everywhere they were, went, they dominated. Hebrews 11, 32 to 36. Is it time will fail me? What, what then shall I more say? For time will fail me to speak of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, of David, also and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouth of lions quenched the violence of fire escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness were made strong valiant in flight and they put to flight the armies of the alien these things are missing in our Christianity and that is why we cannot take our generation. Are you ready to pray? Can we pray for two minutes? Can we pray like a people who know that they have lost their heritage? Can we pray like a people who desire to see the ways of God again? Can we pray like a people who don't want to go join the spirit of just men made perfect without testimonies? It's called the cloud of witnesses that means anyone who enters that cloud must carry a witness Paul said henceforth know we no man after the flesh what is the witness that you carry some carry the witness of purity some carry the witness of the fear of God some carry the witness of obedience some carry the witness as custodians of mysteries some carry the witness of dominion some carry the witness of signs and wonders what is your witness for some of them their witness was the fear of the Lord. But by all means, they made sure they crossed over with a dimension that revealed that they made contact with the grace of God. What is the grace that you are taught? A generation must cry. A generation must travel. He said, who shall stand upon the hills of the Lord? Who shall ascend upon his holy mountain? He said, it's they that have a clean hands. They that have not exalted their hearts in vanity. There is a place to stand where you can give judgment over generations. He said, in the last, last day, the house of God shall be upon the mountains of God. And men of all nations shall say, let's go to the house of the Lord. For out of Zion proceeds the Lord. How come the house of God has become a social gathering? How come the house of God is no longer a place of prayer? Where the oracles of God proceed from? A generation must cry. A generation must survive. A generation must weep. We must become tired of our weakness. We must become tired of our powerlessness. We must become tired of our compromise. And rise up as a people representing God on earth. Jesus called us territorial lampstand. The lamp of Ephesus. The lamp of Philadelphia. The lamp of Thessalonica. We must become lamp. The lamp of Laodosia. We are the light of the world. We are a city set upon a hill. But where is our witness? A generation is asking the church a question. Where is your God? Where is your witness? And the Bible tells us the answer is that the priest must lie between the altar and the pouches. And he must travel in prayer. He must travel in prayer. He must travel in prayer. We must not take mediocrity as our end. No, we are the generation of the emancipator. We are the generation that will bring the Christ to this world. There is a level of witness that we must show. Maracapatona, Maradonia, Balagate, a 
in time. The Bible said there is a cloud of witnesses. That's the, that's the convergence of the immortals. Where men must leave behind the garment of flesh and they become addressed as spirit of just men made perfect. You must be justified, you must be perfected. But justification and perfection are not the only two criteria you must come with a witness because it's the cloud of witnesses 
So if you don't have a witness, you can't stand there. Jesus opened the gate because he justified us. Jesus opened the gate because he perfected us in the spirit. But you must bring your witness. And that witness, there are those who came with the witness of martyrdom. They died for their conviction. There are those who came with the witness of signs and wonders. There are those who came with the witness of nations. And they conquered for Jesus. There are those who came with the witness of purity. Garments that are not defied. There are those who came with the witness of sacrifice. Most of the things God did in their generation, they sponsored it. So their resources was for kingdom. There are those who came with the witness of selflessness. They reached out to the weak and helped them to stand. What is your witness? You are the one to determine where you stand in the world to come. And that will be the best gift that life gives you. Lift your right hand towards heaven and say, Lord, help me. For it is not by power, it's not by might, it's by the spirit of the living God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Please, as you go home, spend time in prayers. A lot depends on us. A lot. Because if you don't wake up, you won't know the value of time. They say, awake, awake, thou that sleepest. And Christ will give you light. That means if you don't awake, you won't have light. They say, arise, shine, your light is come. If you don't arise, you won't see your light. The generation must wake up. So much is trapped in time. You determine what you can excavate. I was telling Pastor Godwin, we were in the house earlier today, and we were just wondering, in just three years, we started the work, we have won over 800,000 souls. And I asked myself, what if we had productive three years like this, 20 years before now? That means in three years, there's a possibility of winning more than 800,000 souls. So what have I been doing with the many three years of my life? I know there is a season to everything. But it gave me a consciousness that time is not designed to be wasted. It's a redeeming the time. For the days are evil. We will not be here forever. But there is a place where we will live forever. What we do in this short lifetime is what will determine how we live here. Father, we ask for grace. We ask for help. And we ask for mercy. That by all means, everyone here will become a nation. And everyone here will play their part as far as the ordination is concerned. You see, when David was done serving the, his generation, he said he rested with his fathers. That means while we are here, we must serve until we have to depart to find rest. Don't rest when you should be serving. Otherwise, you will labor when you, will rest, when you should rest. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Sit down for a moment. In the next two minutes, we're out of here. Sorry for taking your time. He, 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 he brought a body. And bodies are designed to be serviced. For those of you who were caught up, it means your spirit is healthy. If you were not caught up, God help you. Maybe at another time, Jesus Christ will show mercy. Give the Lord a big hand. Who is rounding up? Two minutes, we don't have time anymore. Thank you for staying to the end of this video. Thank you. We are very, very appreciative of your presence in this community. This is a community of believers. We are here to enlighten ourselves through the word of God, through practical life applicable teachings. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe to this channel. If you have not liked this video, please just take two seconds and just hit that like button and share this video with others to bless someone just as you have been blessed by this video. It is only God that can do the impossible. And when you are faced with impossibility in your life, the only place to run to, the only person to run to is God. And that is why we encourage ourselves to keep studying the Word of God, to keep praying, fasting, to keep meditating on the Word of God so that God will come through for us. Have 
a nice time. God bless you. See you in another of our videos. And there are so many videos that we have posted so far. Go through our channels. Go through our channel and check on our videos and see how impactful they are going to be in your life. Thank you. God bless you. Keep shining for Jesus. Keep shining for God. Peace.